As a dietitian for dancers, there are two specific questions that I probably get asked several times a week, every week. And that's, how do I know if I am eating enough or how do I know if I'm eating too much? Today, we are covering both of these questions because I want to leave you with solid information so that you can answer them on your own. Let's dive into it. Hi, I'm Rachel Wine. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, the founder of Two Point Nutrition and the creator of The Healthy Dancer. I work with dancers to help them build sustainable habits around food. This includes rebuilding their relationships with both their plate and their body. Today, we are talking about some of the most common signs and reasons for why dancers might wonder whether or not they're eating enough or whether or not they're eating too much during the day. And I often find that dancers will view these two questions, either not eating enough or eating too much in a very dichotomous way. They either think they're eating too little or they're eating too much, and it's so challenging to identify the in-between. But today we're gonna clarify this because your body can do a tremendous job in communicating with you how much food it needs to support your dancing and your everyday activities. In fact, behaviors like overeating or eating to a point past physical comfort is often one way in which our body is communicating a need to us. And this is where these two different views of this question, under eating versus overeating, really become interlocked. They're not so disconnected as we often assume them to be. And really what that means is that dancers who find themselves overeating or eating to a point past physical comfort are very often coming from a baseline where they might actually be under fueling. So let's dive into some very common signs that you can be on the lookout for to determine whether or not you are actually eating enough as a dancer. First things first, are you constantly thinking about food? Now there's a difference between feeling excited about food or thinking about an upcoming meal and having ruminating thoughts about food and your meals, especially when those thoughts are also overwhelmed with perhaps stress and anxiety constant thoughts about food to the point where you're really struggling to even focus in your classes or pick up choreography can be a sign that you're not getting enough of it at your baseline. These ruminating thoughts can also set the stage for a major increase in craving. So when dancers tell me that they are struggling with consistent and overwhelming cravings throughout their day, one of the first things I help them to identify is is there a food or a macronutrient like a carbohydrates or fats or a food group, for example, breads or desserts that you are trying to avoid, trying to restrict for whatever reason that might be, usually one that is rooted in diet culture, so that your body is subconsciously trying to tell you that it needs more of that nutrient during the day. This is what we commonly see with carbohydrates and fats, two of those three macronutrients that dancers often develop fears towards. And I've spoken about this previously, but carbohydrates are a fantastic energy source for our bodies, and fat plays a major role in overall hormonal balance in addition to other things like building strong bones. But if either of these macronutrients is limited in your diet, then your body is gonna ultimately communicate that it needs more. And that communication can be in the form of those ruminating, overwhelming thoughts that eventually turn into cravings. Next up, for dancers who get a period, missing or irregular periods, or a period that hasn't started yet by adolescence, could be a major sign that you're not eating enough throughout your day. 
One of the first things that I am working on with the dancers in the Healthy Dancer program is making sure that their body has enough energy needs to support not just their physical dancing, but also their body's metabolic needs. And often that means for dancers who get a period, supporting regular menstruation. And for your body to do that, it needs an adequate amount of energy. So if you're noticing irregular periods, missing periods, or you're an adolescent who has not yet gotten their period, then you're really going to want to take this as a sign that it's time to speak with a registered dietitian nutritionist to assess whether or not you're eating enough throughout the day. This also brings into the conversation relative energy deficiency in sport, that syndrome of negative complications that we see from low energy intake or inadequate energy balance. As an example, you're not eating enough and you're exercising a ton. Now, relative energy deficiency in sport, also known as red S, can happen in all dancers. And I've spoken in previous videos how dancers can determine whether or not they might be struggling with relative energy deficiency in sport, but one such way would be recurring injuries, like stress fractures. If you feel like you're struggling to heal from injuries or you're just experiencing recurring injuries, then it might be a sign that we need to boost your intake throughout the day. Another sign that you might not be eating enough is unexplained digestive discomfort. There's a lot of emerging research that's showing us that feelings like bloat and constipation, which are often associated with functional digestive disorders, might be associated with disordered eating. Functional digestive disorders can often go misdiagnosed for dancers. One such example is IBS or irritable bowel syndrome and functional digestive disorders shouldn't be confused with other digestive disorders like colitis and Crohn's disease. Both of which, unlike with our functional digestive disorders, have very clear markers for diagnosis. So this is why we often see misdiagnoses or unexplained diagnoses when it comes to those functional digestive disorders. And just to clarify, these can often be experienced as a compilation of negative symptoms like gas, constipation, and even diarrhea. What's super interesting is that the research shows us that 98% of those who struggle with disordered eating also struggle with some sort of digestive disorder. And disordered eating in of itself has been shown to be a cause of some of this digestive discomfort. So if you're experiencing unexplained discomfort, then this might be another clear sign that it's time to work with a registered dietitian to better assess your daily meal plan. The confusing thing with a lot of these symptoms is that many dancers who experience them will think that they need to turn to elimination type diets to help relieve the discomfort, when in fact, eliminating these very foods might be worsening or exacerbating those symptoms. So if you are experiencing unexplained digestive discomfort, then it could be a telltale sign that it's time to meet with a registered dietitian to better assess your daily meal plan. Another sign that you might not be eating enough, and this is one I've covered in previous videos, but sometimes dancers forget to make the connection, is you feel like you are emotionally eating more often than not. Turning to food to navigate through heightened emotional triggers or emotional distress can be driven or exacerbated by under eating or a baseline that just isn't adequately fueled. So though food in of itself can be a coping tool to temporarily relieve that emotional discomfort, that behavior of eating when you are experiencing emotional distress will be exacerbated if your baseline intake is too low. And this is often where we start to see dancers eating to a point past physical comfort or overeating in these very instances. Another sign, and this one's a bit more obvious, is you're just not feeling energized in class. Now you could be moving through the bar, feeling pretty drained, or by the time you get to Petit Allegro, you can barely lift your feet off the ground. So really start to consider your energy levels in class as a telltale sign of whether or not you need to get more food in. Another less common reason is you're trying to abide by those clean eating lifestyles. So I've said it many times before, and I get a lot of pushback for this, but I really stand behind what I say. 
Clean eating can very often guise disordered eating. And with the dancers that I've worked with in my many years as a dietitian, I can tell you that those who promote clean eating lifestyles are usually proponents of low calorie diets. So we really want to steer clear of these types of restrictive regimens. Another telltale sign that I've spoken about previously on my channel is you are relying too heavily on intuitive eating. I know this one often takes dancers off guard, but hear me out. For dancers especially, diminished hunger cues throughout their day are super common, whether it be because of a history of restrictive eating or just a super busy schedule. Dancers' hunger cues often go unnoticed and therefore are quite unreliable. So if a dancer is unknowingly attempting a quote-unquote intuitive eating plan, then they could be risking underfueling, especially if they're not experiencing reliable hunger cues throughout the day. So this is where proactive fueling comes into play and you can read more about it on my blog. Another telltale sign is that you're always feeling cold. There could be several signs for this, but the most common reason is that your body might not have enough body fat on it. And body fat plays a huge role in thermal regulation. So if your body fat stores are too low, then your body's going to have a really challenging time maintaining heat and regulating its internal temperature. A few more telltale signs. You are really worried about tracking your calories throughout the day. So the entire reason that I wanted to make this video was so that you can identify whether or not you are eating enough without having to rely on these external food regimens that often entail calorie counting. If you feel like you are trying to abide by a maximum target calorie level throughout your day, then chances are you might be risking under eating. This falls into my next one, which is you're also getting nutrition information from unqualified sources. So if you are researching how many calories you should be eating in a day and you're pulling that off the internet, then I suggest you to beware because the internet, a calculation that you're reading online is not gonna know the amount of calories that your individual body needs during the day. So I highly encourage that you stay away from those calorie counters and rather consider these other telltale signs to identify whether or not you might be eating enough. And if you're still struggling, if you're still experiencing those recurrent injuries, if you're not getting a period, and if you're experiencing any other of these examples I mentioned in this video, then you want to take it a step further and reach out to a licensed professional clinician. A registered dietitian nutritionist like myself is here to support you, to help you build a nourishing meal plan that will adequately fuel your dancing. And this brings me into that second question that I often get from dancers is, well, what if I think I'm eating too much throughout the day? So instead of asking whether or not you're eating too much, I want you to consider a few other reflective types of questions. The first being, am I experiencing on a regular and recurring basis eating past physical comfort. So I've previously spoken about how we can use the hunger fullness scale to identify what a comfortable level of hunger and fullness feels like and how we can aim for this throughout our day. If you are struggling, if you feel like you are ending up more on the extremes of this scale, well, that's when we want to start to intervene. And the first thing I suggest is going back to those previous questions to see if your baseline intake might be inadequate and causing you to enter these experiences where you leave feeling a bit more out of control around food. And again, eating to that point past physical comfort because overeating, emotional eating, and even as I spoke about before, mindless eating can all be products of baseline under fueling for dancers. So we really want to ensure that we are sticking to a consistent and regular eating pattern throughout the day. And I work with many dancers on proactive fueling, which usually means that we are planning ahead some meals and snacks that we can get in at regular times throughout our day. Now this really looks different for all dancers, right? But just as a general example, we're looking at around three meals, two, three snacks, maybe even more if you are a younger growing dancer in order to better support your needs. And within each of those meals and snacks, you really want to consider balance that you've got components of all three of those macronutrients, a source of carbohydrates, 
fats, and protein. As long as you are prioritizing those consistent, regular eating patterns and that balance at each of those eating times, then you will be better set up to ensure that you are eating adequately throughout the day. But of course, the conversation doesn't end there. We also want to constantly be reevaluating whether or not we're struggling with restrictive food rules. Because food restrictions, whether that is a current or previous food restriction or an anticipated food restriction, can further Further drive all of these red flags that I've listed when trying to identify whether or not your meal plan is supporting you. But if you are struggling, reach out. I'm here to support you as you learn how to fuel. I've got a ton of different resources from free resources to paid resources, economical options that you can decide on so that you can start the work of building a supportive meal plan for a dancer. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please hit the subscribe button so that you will be the first to know when new videos post. I'll talk to you soon.